Welcome yogis to this practice. In today's practice, we stay low down to the ground. It's a practice to really de-stress and to feel grounded, to come back to the sense of belonging. And doesn't necessarily make it an easier practice, as that it is really a practice where you are helped to draw your attention inwards and to come back to um, who you are, how you feel, and to recharge your batteries. And we're starting with this to see the position. The first thing we'll do is we find a connection into our body. So yoga practice is all about connection. And the um, first connection we're looking for, most of the time it's the easiest connection, is our body. And we just kind of check and see how we feel, moving into the hips and the spine. It's just a little bit of just an assessment. Let go of any judgment, just kind of only feel. Can be little movements or can be big movements. If you feel any tension or tightness, then you just move into that. And you just feel into that without forcing anything. If you have any injuries, anything you feel that you need to take into account, then you just make a mental note without any judgment. Just making sure that you nurture yourself during your practice. At the time that you feel ready, you just come to an upright position. And then we just find a connection both into the breath and our energetic body. So we use the breath to connect into our energetic body. On the inhalation, we're rising up from the sitting bones up into the crown of the head. And on the exhalation, we're dropping the energy down from the crown of the head in the sitting bones. And we're lengthening and deepening the breath as we do this. So on the inhalation, we're rising up. The breath is traveling more into the ribcage and down into the belly. And on the exhalation, we're dropping the energy all the way down from the crown of the head back into the sitting bones. Feel that sense of being grounded. And then on the inhalation, feel that sense of rising with the breath. And on the exhalation, feel that sense of being grounded, of connecting down into the earth. Keep on breathing just like that. If it feels good to have that little bit of movement in the body, just add that. And check in here for a moment to see how you feel energetically. Maybe you feel a little bit tired. Maybe you've had a busy day. Maybe you feel energetic. Maybe you feel restless. All of it is just fine. You just check in. Allowing the energy to be balanced. The rising energy that makes us alert and awake. And a sinking energy that calms us down and helps us to rest. And then for a moment, as we are sitting still, we connect into our mind. The first part is the thinking mind, our thoughts. Just check into the story that's there, the words that are going around in our mind. This is called our jiva mind, the thinking mind. Just check in for a moment. What's the story today? And if the thinking mind is like the waves on the ocean, just feel that. Are the waves big or small? Are they coming and going at a fast pace? Or is there just an occasional wave with some stillness in between? Just check in. Surface of the ocean. And from the surface of the ocean, from our thinking mind, we're diving under. Underwater, this is your higher mind, your higher consciousness. So go down. Just feel here. What's the sensation there once you dive under? What's the feeling? There are no words here. There's no story here. There's just the experience. There's just the stillness, the silence. That's just naturally there. At any time that you feel you've come back up and you're back in the waves, you just notice that. And then you come back, you dive back under, letting go of the story. Keep on going down. Keep on bathing yourself 
into the stillness, the serenity. Your higher mind, this is called Purusha. There's many names. One of them is Purusha. And then after having connected into our body, our energetic body, our mind, and now we bring the hands face down onto the heart space. We bow the head down to the heart and we connect into our heart. Feel here for a moment. The purest essence of you is here in your heart. And our aim in life and in our practice is to lead from the heart, to be guided by the heart. The mind is just a humble helper, a servant of the heart. The heart is the strategist. So feel here into your heart. Acknowledge your sensations. The feelings. And then we take a deep breath in. And exhale fully through your mouth. <sighs> and we do that one more time. Deep breath in. And exhale fully through your mouth. <sighs> and then we're releasing the hands next to the hips. We're uncrossing the legs. Bring the outside edges of your feet down. And then coming up into a standing position. is straightening the legs out. And here we connect into the legs. So gently push through the knees. Pedal through the heels if that feels good. And bending your legs and very slowly peeling yourself up. The head is coming up last. And then once the head is up, then we're reaching up through the arms. A little bit of a back bend maybe. And then draw your hands down into your heart space. Samastiti. Stepping your left leg back. Feet are about a meter apart. Turning your toes towards each other. Releasing the hands down and then make a big circle out. Hands touch overhead and then a big circle back. This time the hands go behind. Inhale, lift your chest, lift your hands on the exhalation, sinking it forward and down into your prasarita padasana. So just find softness here into the shoulders. Just give yourself a bit of time. We're not used to this motion in the shoulders. And it's your first forward bend maybe. So just kind of only feel, maybe gently rock if that feels good. Allowing the weight of the hands and the arms to open up into the shoulders and into the chest. Exhale here fully. And then on the inhalation, bend your legs to come up to standing. Finding our eagle wrap, the right arm goes underneath the left. The hands can be wrapped or can come onto the shoulders. And then we're opening up into a little bit of a back bend by pushing your hips forward and reaching your hands back. Only as much as you feel is good. If a back bend doesn't feel right, you just bring your arms straight up towards the sky. Just feel here, opening up the front of the body. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhalation, release your hands. Turn towards the front of the mat. Bring the hands next to your ears, opening up into the heart space. Again, recognizing the heart as that part of your body where your true self resides. And then very slowly, we're going to find our balance. So transfer the weight into your right leg and find your balance here. Straightening up through both legs into our warrior three. The hands are remaining in our prana mudra. Just feeling here into your balance, finding trust in your own ability to maintain that balance. Let go of doubts. Moving out of the, the waves, diving under into your higher mind. And then bending your leg and landing your left foot as l far away as you can. Bring your hands next to your hips and find yourself here into a lunge. I call this your Superman pose. You're pressing the hands up towards the sky behind, and we're leading from the heart, so it's much more flying than diving. And in this position, we're just kind of tapping into our power, our inner strength, and just feel that rise. We're pushing the weight much more forward than back, so it goes more into the right leg. 
and then humble yourself, hands down, pyramid pose, straightening the legs, extending over your right leg, releasing the head down, maybe walk your hands forward a little bit further if that's possible for you. You're welcome to stay onto the fingertips to get that stretch into the shoulders as well. Finding space here. Always a beautiful pose to find some gratitude. Remember something that you're grateful for. Exhale here fully, and then bring your back knee down onto the ground as you rebend into your right leg. We're coming up into a low lunge. So we're rising up, and the hands go behind the head so that we have that support here, and then we're just leaning back. It's like we're in a lazy chair. Feel that support of the hands. The head is really soft. It changes the pose quite a bit, but you just can let go of any tension into the throat and neck. Opening up, pressing the elbows towards the space behind, and then keep on leaning away. Your belly button pushes away from your right knee. Taking a deep breath in here, and then straightening into your right leg as your hands land on either side of your foot into your half splits. Also here, you're welcome to walk your hands more forward if you have more space into the hamstring, the back of your right leg. Extending over the leg, just feeling here into the sensations. Keep on releasing. You can have your toes down onto the ground. You're also welcome to push through the heel and to pull your toes back. Gives it a little bit of a different sensation. Getting the stretch more into the calf and the back of the knee. Exhale here fully. Bring your right hand on the inside of your right foot. Bend your right leg. Your left foot goes behind you and you can tuck your toe or you can untuck your toe. Choice is yours. You open it up here. It's like an extended angle pose. Your left hand goes back up and over. Now keep on leaning your hips forward in the direction of your right heel and lifting your chest up towards the sky. Imagine the sun is shining. We try to catch a little bit of sunlight onto the chest. You should feel this as a strong opening into the hips. Exhale here fully. On the inhalation, you bring yourself all the way up and over into a supported side plank. So your left hand lands and your right foot can go up towards the sky as your right leg straightens. And your right hand goes up overhead. Find that space here, opening up. Exhale here fully on the inhalation. Again, we're coming all the way up and over. This time the right leg remains straight. You're welcome to push your heel forward a little bit. The hand can land onto the shin, the ankle, or down onto the ground. If it's okay for you, then the toes are still pointing up. Parigrasana, you can have your hand either straight up, or you can bring it all the way up and over your leg, finding that extension. Now you have the choice, you can tuck your back toe, or you can keep as it is, coming into a half camel. So we're bringing it all the way around, landing the left hand onto the left heel, and then we're opening up here, half camel. Find that space, find that reach. If possible, connect to your right leg, and turn the toes up towards the sky. Opening up the heart, pushing the hips forward, and then on the exhalation, swing it around. We come back into our pyramid pose, straightening both legs, extending over the leg, hands out in front, wherever it feels is right. Coming back to this pose, a bit of gratitude, a bit of grounding after the opening up into the heart, drawing now back inwards. Exhale here, fully press your hands into the ground. Come high up onto the tippy toes of your left foot. Kick your right leg back. Now I want you to stay onto the tippy toes of your left foot. Reach it up as much as you can. Reach it up. Find that strength in your legs, the hamstrings. Open it up. Keep on reaching. Try to touch the ceiling with your foot. And then bend your leg. Land your foot behind your knee. And open it up into your wild thing. Now, really reaching the chest and the hips up towards the sky. If it feels better for you to bend both legs into a flip dog, then you're welcome to. Open up, push your hips up, hips towards the sky. Put the weight back into your left arm as much as you dare to. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhalation, you're swinging it all the way around. We're landing the right hand. The right knee goes to the left elbow. Push the weight forward so that the shoulder tips come over the knee, the, sorry, over the fingertips. Keep on activating here. And then bring your foot out to the side. See if your foot can land in line with your hands, see if that's possible. Bring your back heel down onto the ground. And on the inhalation, open it all the way up into your rock star, your fallen triangle. Hand goes up overhead. 
feel here into the space. Open up, open up, open up. Push your hand into the ground. And this time we push the weight back into the feet. And then on the exhalation, sinking down through the hips. Both hands up to the sky. And sink it forward and down. Releasing here, Upa Vista Konasana. Straight forward fold. So we did all that opening for a moment. And now we're just drawing it back in, the energy. Sinking down, releasing, letting go. Back of the legs are stretching. You want to try to lead from the heart still, so we're not trying to bring the forehead down to the ground, but we're trying to reach the heart forward, keeping the heart open, always trying to lead from the heart. Exhale here fully, and then bring your right shoulder to your right knee, and open it up into your side stretch. Hand can go up overhead, wherever it goes. If you're lucky and you can pick up onto your foot, you're welcome to do so. But don't sacrifice the opening into the heart to reach for the foot. Never sacrificing the heart. It's just not worthwhile. Exhaling here fully. And then we're coming up. We're bending the right leg. Bring the foot on the inside of the left thigh. Janusya Sasana. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, extending forward over the foot. You can grab the wrist or the foot or the ankle or just have your hands down onto the ground. But just feel that you're leading from the heart and then once you do, let your head hang down to release tension from the back of the neck. Releasing down through both the right hip and the right shoulder. Exhale here fully on the inhalation, coming all the way up, hands up overhead. And on the exhalation, twist to the left side, so away from the bent knee. We're trying for the left hand, the hand behind you, to arrive in that spot where it normally lives, the left top side of the mat, so that you can open up through the shoulder a little bit more. You really feel that you can pull that shoulder through. Feel the twist in the spine all the way from the back of the neck into the sacrum. Press your back hand down onto the ground. Bring your right knee up towards the sky, and then open it back up into your wild thing, Lift the hips, lift the heart, find that space. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, lend your right hand. Pull your right leg forward and through into your pigeon position. And now we're staying in an upright variation here. So I quite like to tuck the back toe under and kind of play around a little bit with pulling that hip down. You can walk your hands down or back as much as you like to. And you can also look over your right shoulder. That also will make it a little bit more intense. So we're trying to stretch here in this practice into our psoas muscle, relaxing the hip flexors. Psoas is the biggest hip flexor. And the psoas muscle is our stress muscle. When it tightens, it pulls the knee. Pulls the knee into the chest. Automatically does that. And that's our stress protection. But what we're trying to do here, as we'd say to the psoas, it's all okay. You can lengthen, you can release. And by lengthening into the psoas muscle, we're automatically also stretching into our diaphragm so that we can breathe a little bit deeper. The psoas and the diaphragm are connected at the top. And we're opening up into the chest slightly in this back bend so that we acknowledge the heart energy. All of that will help us to just be more grounded, more connected. And then we bring the forearms down onto the ground in front of us, tucking the back toe under and stepping it back into a forearm plank. And here we just find a bit of connection into our core. We're pulling the toes and the elbows towards each other if that feels good. We try to have the shoulders and the hips at the same height, gently rounding the lower back by lengthening the tailbone in the direction of your heels. And then stepping the feet in and finding your um, dolphin pose here, we're releasing down through the chest. This pose is really about the shoulders and the chest, so you're welcome to bend your legs. We're releasing into the shoulders here again. So the shoulders relating to the sense of responsibility or burdens that we have. So we just want to let go of that. Release into that, stretch, open up the shoulders. And then from here we're stepping the feet back and we're lowering it down into a sphinx. Lifting through the chest. Find that space into the heart. 
pull your hands into the ground and then slide them back. And then keep on sliding them back and pushing up into your upward facing dog pose. Find the space, front of the heart. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhalation, push it back. Downward facing dog pose. Feel here for a moment. Pedal through the heels. Release any tension in the lower back if you feel any. And then on the inhalation, rising up. Right leg towards the sky. This time you can keep your heel down to ask for a little bit more space in the hamstring on the left side. And on the exhalation, draw your knee into your chest. Step your foot forward and all the way through. On the inhalation, we're rising up here into our Superman pose. So we push the weight forward. We're flying more than what we're diving. So we're leading from the heart space, tapping in here to inner power, inner strength. Exhale here fully. Now on the inhalation, we're bringing the hands forward. We pull it forward and then we're leaning back and we're opening up to all the possibilities. Find that space here, front of the body. And then coming back to our guardian pose where we started, reaching up through the hands. And the exhalation is a big circle out, extending forward as we interlace the hands behind. Prasaradipadasanasana. So you're welcome to step your feet further away from each other if that feels good, or you can keep them closer together. Make sure that you release tension in the back of the neck. Maybe open and close the mouth a couple of times to release tension there as we stretch and open up into the shoulders, letting go of all those responsibilities, all those burdens that we're carrying with us, just to release them, set them free, offer them up. Allowing softness to arrive in your shoulders. So don't push back. Don't force anything. Just release into it. Just allow the pose to come to you. Exhale here fully. Bending your legs on the inhalation, coming all the way up. Eagle wrap this time. The left arm goes underneath the right as we open it up. So you can bring your hands onto your shoulders. You can find a back bend if that feels good. Exhale fully. On the inhalation, slowly bringing yourself up, turning towards the back of your mat. Hands come next to your ears in your prana mudra, straighten into the legs, pushing your right hip forward, left hip slightly back, and then transfer your weight forward into your left leg as you find your balance here on the left leg. Warrior three. Virabhadrasana. Hands are in prana mudra, so the hands are next to the ears, opening up into our throat chakra. Finding expression here. And more than anything, we really tap into here our ability to trust ourselves. Even if it's wobbly, even if we lose the balance, we don't lose the trust. Exhale here fully, bending into your left leg. Land your right foot a long way behind you. Swing your hands next to your hips. Come back into your Superman pose. So feel here. Feel that you're leading from the heart, so we're not diving but we're really leading and we step here into our superpowers. All that strength that's there, we take ownership of that. We don't resist it, we don't fight it. We just really feel that power and we take it for what it is. And then on the exhalation, hands go down as we extend through the legs and we bow it down here with gratitude to the earth. Coming back, drawing the attention inwards. You've noticed that you're back in the waves, that you're back in your thinking mind. Just release that. Dive back down. Exhale fully and then bring your back knee down onto the ground, opening up into our low lunge with our hands behind our head. So we're just really leaning here back. It makes a very big difference mentally or emotionally if we can just soften the head into the hands. Find that trust, opening up into your back bend, the heart is reaching up towards the sky. Find that space. Keep on leaning away from your left knee. Opening up into the right front side of your hip. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, straightening into your left leg. Hands on either side of your foot. Half splits, Adha Hanumanasana. You're welcome to push through the heel. Pull your toe back. You can bring your foot forward, leg forward a bit. The aim is for the right hip and the right knee to be more or less on top of each other. And then we're just extending over the leg and we're just feeling that space. Exhale 
Exhaling here fully. Bring your left hand on the inside of your left foot. Bend your left leg. Bring your right foot over towards the left side. Lean forward and open up. This is like an extended angle pose. Keep on leaning forward, stretching, reaching the heart up towards the sky. Exhale here fully on the inhalation, coming all the way up, straightening as you do into your left leg. Supported side plank. Opening up. Lift your heart. Lift your hips. Find that space. Keep your left leg straight on the inhalation, coming back up and over. This time the leg is straight, so you can stay here. You can bring your hand up overhead, or you can sink down more over your leg. Feel the variation that works for you. Exhale here fully. Tuck your back toe or not on the inhalation. Sway it around. Land your hand on your heel and open it up. Half camel. If you can connect into your left toes, reach them up towards the sky. Find the space in your heart. Push your hips forward. Lift your heart up. And on the next exhalation, sway it around. Pyramid pose. Hands on either side of your foot. Straighten both your legs. And feel here. Bring your hands as far forward as you feel is right for you. You're always welcome to use blocks here. Or you're always welcome to not have your right left leg bent. It really doesn't matter. You always find a variation that works for you. Nothing is more or less. You work with a connection in your body. The better connection you have the better you can modify the pose to the variation that is right for you. Bring your hands down onto the ground, press, them, press the floor away, come high up onto the tippy toes of your right foot, kick your left foot all the way back and up. So try to stay onto the tippy toes of your right foot, trying to find all that space in the hips. It's almost like a splits position here. Keep on reaching up through your left foot. And then on the exhalation, bend your leg, land your foot behind your knee, and open it up here into your wild thing. Or if you prefer to, you can bend both legs and open it up into your flip dog. Put the weight forward into your right hand as much as you can. Open up through the hips, the chest. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, land your left hand. Bring your left knee, knee to your left elbow. So push it forward. Now we're shortening in those muscles that we were just lengthening into. Feel that, feel that activation. Kick your foot out. Inhale, rise it up. Rock star. So back heels down onto the ground. We're opening up. We push the weight now back into the feet. Lifting the hips, lift the chest. Exhale fully. Inhale, rise your arm up. Exhale, sink it down. Inhale, lift up, both hands. Exhale, press our Padanasana. So we had all those back bends, all the activation, and now we're reconnecting down into the earth. We're coming back to that sense of being grounded, the sense of belonging. This sinking down here, we're just releasing here. The more we draw the attention inwards, the more energy we add. Keep on letting go here. Keep on sinking down. Keep on releasing. Opening up through the back of the legs. Keep on leading from the heart as much as you feel you can. Lengthening through the front of the body. Exhale here fully. And on the inhalation, you bring your left shoulder to your left knee. And you're opening it up into your side stretch. Your right hand can go up like this. You can also find a bind behind if that feels better for you. You can bring your hand up. and Maybe over in the direction of your foot. So we're trying to lead from the heart. So the heart is being pulled up. Again, imagine the sun is shining. We try to catch that sunlight onto the chest. Keep on opening up. Taking a deep breath in here. And then gently release. Coming up, facing to the front of the mat, bending your left leg into your right thigh. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, sink it forward. And down. Uh, Find that space, front of the body. Keep on leading. Your hands are wherever they need to be. It really doesn't matter. Find space. Open up into the space. Just follow what feels right for you. Janushyasana. Keep on sinking down, especially through the left sitting bone. Getting the beautiful stretch into the lower back. 
Exhaling here fully on the inhalation, rising up, both hands up towards the sky on the exhalation, twist, this time to the right side, left hand onto the right near thigh, right hand tries to reach behind as far as possible, the right hand is not there to hold your weight, it's really there only to lift you up more out of the lower back. Taking a deep breath in here, bring the weight into your back hand, lift your left knee up, press your left foot down, rise it up into your wild thing. Open up front of the body hard, keep on rising, finding space, taking a deep breath in. On the exhalation, land your hand, pull your left leg all the way through into your pigeon position. So here we're just walking the hands back. Opening up here into the front of the body. I like to tuck my back toe, as I said, on the other side as well, to create more space. And keep on leaning, reaching, finding that space. Not forcing, don't throw your head back too much. Too much tension in the back of the neck. The head can just be in an upright position. Focus is really here, the front of the back hip, and then from there, the heart space. Taking a deep breath in, and then release your hands out in front. Tuck your back toe, step it back, forearm plank. Find that activation here into your core. Keep on lengthening the tailbone, pushing the, the chest up away from the ground, and then walk your feet in. And find your dolphin pose, releasing into the shoulders, so you're welcome to bend your legs all the way like that. This is not about the hamstrings, this is really about the shoulders. If you want to add a hamstring stretch, you can, but don't put a hamstring stretch in to take away from your shoulders. You know, sometimes we add on to take away. So if you can straighten your legs here as you keep your shoulders in the same position, then you're welcome to. But otherwise, just keep your legs bent and bring your chest in the direction of your knees. And then very slowly walk yourself back, lower your hips down. Lift up. Sphinx pose. Keep on pulling the chest through, pulling your hands into the ground, and then keep on pulling your hands back and lift it up, up dog. Lift your chest, and on the exhalation, down dog. Walking your feet in, releasing through the chest, finding space, opening. Keep on sinking the heart down, direction of the knees. Exhale here fully. On the inhalation, lifting up left leg, reach it up towards the sky. And on the exhalation, draw your knee into your chest, stepping your foot forward and through. Finding here your lunge, reach your hands next to your hips, tapping into your inner power, your inner strength. Just feel that, keep on leaning forward into your left leg, keep on reaching through the heart, releasing through the shoulders. Feel that power. Exhale fully. On the inhalation, sway yourself forward and then lean back, opening up to all the possibilities that are there right in front of you. Exhale fully on the inhalation, turning, reach your hands up towards the sky. And on the exhalation, big circle. Last one, Prasarada Padanasana. Interlacing the hands, if you want to find an alternate interlace, you can. Just bring the opposite, opposite finger on top. And just feel here, keep on releasing here, letting go of tension, burdens in the shoulders. Doesn't matter how high or how low your arms are, you just want to find that release. Taking a deep breath in. And on the exhalation, letting go of the hands. So here you can just hang down into a straight variation of your Prasarita Patsanasana into an inversion. This is already an inversion. If you feel it would be good to come up into a headstand, then you're welcome to. Then from here, you just bring your hands down onto the ground, either a tripod headstand, if that feels good, or your headstand where you have your hands like this, your head is in between the hands. So you can do that as a straddle, or you can do it in any way. If you go up into an inversion, always make sure that you do that safely for yourself. 
don't force anything, especially if you're practicing by yourself at home. You don't have a teacher there. And just make sure if you feel that it's better to do it against the wall, feel free to do it against the wall. In that case, in your headstand, the knuckles are very close to the ground, or the back of the head is very, clo uh, very close to the wall, sorry. Or the head, the back of the head is very close to the wall. So I'll come into a traditional tripod and I'll come up into my straddle, which you don't have to do, but you can. Making sure that if you are upside down, that you keep on breathing, that your breath is natural and long and deep. Finding just that trust, trust in your own ability. Doesn't matter if it's wobbly. The wobbliness comes from your body sorting out where your balance is, where your center of gravity is. So don't freak out about those wobbles. It's actually very beneficial to just kind of go with it, to feel into it, allowing your body to just find that balance. Sometimes we overthink. We think our mind has to solve this. But the mind has very little to do with it. It's really our body, so dive under, move away out of the waves. So we're opening up here. Either position that you're in, it doesn't matter whether or not you're in your headstand or you're just hanging down in your Prasarita Patanasana. We're opening up into the crown of the head, Sahasara Chakra. Always beautiful at the end of the practice. Let's take a moment there to find that connection, to understand that... We're all connected, we're all related. We all have the light in us. And that level deep down, we're just all the same. We're all looking for the same, we're all to be loved, to be seen, to be understood. So we're very slowly landing out of our inversion. Coming back down into our straddle position. On the inhalation, have a halfway lift, and then walk your hands to the back of the mat into your pyramid pose just for a moment. And then step your back foot forward, right foot forward, sit at the back of the mat. Inhales a halfway lift, and on the exhalation, you bend your legs, you scoop your arms back into your skiers pose so you can rest your thighs, your chest onto your thighs. And then bring your hands forward and roll back onto your back. Feeling here for a moment as you hug your knees into your chest. So now we have a couple of options. You can stay like this. If that feels good, you can bring your hands underneath your hips and extend your legs up towards the sky into your Viparidhi Karani, which is a beautiful pose as well, allowing all the fluids to run out of your legs, or you can find your shoulder stand, which is if you've done a headstand, then please do a shoulder stand now. It's a counter pose for our headstand, letting go of any tension in the shoulders or the neck that we might have built up. So either staying here, hugging your knees into your chest, or finding your shoulder stand. So in the shoulder stand, we're trying to walk the hands in the direction of the rib cage. And we're kicking up or we're pushing up through the toes or the balls of the feet. Welcome to pull your toes back. I quite like that. And you can create little lotus toes, spreading the toes as wide as you can. Keep on lifting up, opening up. Feel the length into the neck. So it's the tips of the shoulders and the back of the head that are resting onto the ground. And you can have any variation here. Maybe you're in this variation. That's perfectly fine too. Just kind of feel the legs are just up into the sky. Just feel what's good for you. Where do you need to be? If you're in your shoulder stand, you can bring one leg down to half plow. Keep on reaching up through the leg that's up. Keep on supporting yourself with your hands. And then we're changing sides. So other leg down. Keep on reaching up for the leg that's up. Bring your focus more on that leg and this leg than on the leg that's going down. Exhale here fully on the inhalation, coming back up. Reach up for a moment, and in any variation that you are, very slowly come down. 
you did your shoulder stand, I want you to do a fish. If you didn't do a shoulder stand, you don't have to, but you might like to do a fish as well. So bring yourselves up, the elbows coming down onto the ground. I like to cross my legs, but you can keep your legs straight as well. Rise up through the chest, let your head hang down, opening up here, pushing the chest up towards the sky. Tips of the uh, shoulders are moving back, let your head hang down freely. Breathing into the chest, opening up into the heart space. Taking a deep breath in. And on the exhalation, we gently release. And we come into our Shavasana, straightening out through the legs, resting the hands next to the hips. The palms are facing up. And just feel here to that sense of being grounded. Notice that the more you release, the more you let go, the more support you find. Realizing that the earth is always there to support you. Feel here that sense of being grounded, of belonging, belonging to yourself. So I invite you to take here as much time as you like. Resting at the end of the practice is always so much benef so beneficial. But I'll be leaving you here in your Shavasana. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. With love and gratitude. Namaste.